Hello, this is Devin Murray with AttractMoreFamilies.com, and today we're going to talk about your home page design for your private or parochial school. So first off, why does why is a home page so important? Uh, why do we talk about that? It's also sometimes called a landing page. You hear it referred to that sometimes. But really, a home page is very different from every other page on your website. Uh, first, realize the majority of your traffic, 80% of your traffic, arrives on this page first. So when 80% of the people come to your website, 80% of them come to your home page. And the majority of first-time visitors, so generally when you're looking, you're looking around 90% of your first-time visitors are coming to your home page. What this means is that this page, this one page, has to pull most of the weight of convincing a prospect to stay on your website and to learn more about your school. It's this one page that does all of that. The five-second rule. People and prospects will hit the back button after five seconds of your page loading if they don't like what they see or don't understand how you will solve the problem. Uh, and also, the, when, I, when we say five seconds, it's not five seconds from when the time your page is fully loaded. It's actually five seconds from the time they click over from the search engine or hit the enter button on their browser. So you this is from the yeah this is the entire 5 seconds you have from the time they left their last page to the time that they will hit the back button back so if your page takes a second or two to load you still have a problem and to do that in 5 you also realize that in 5 seconds a lot of this has to be done at the subconscious level yet yeah, you people just simply do not have time to consciously review your page in 5 seconds or the close to three or four seconds that they really get to see their page. So a lot of this is done at a very subconscious level. So a lot of thought has to be put into this page because it is done so quick. So, you know, I mean, to the point that when when I'm designing websites for people, I will easily put 80% of my time and effort into this one page to make sure that everything is right, that the images are right, the wording is right, that everything is working perfectly. Yeah, because this is the make or break page for most websites. If if you can have a great website and amazing content and an amazing program and an amazing school, but if your home page does not sh communicate that in a subconscious level in those, you know, almost instantly, people are going to hit the back button and move on and go to another program. So because of this, I've, I've come up with five things your home page must have in order for your website to, to be successful and for that home page to be successful. The first thing, it has to provide the path for the three different types of visitors who are coming to your website. It has to provide your USP. It has to provide a reason for you to contact the prospect again in the future. It has to support the search engines. And finally, it has to have, have all this critical content, what is known as above the fold. Obviously, we're going to get into all of these in a little bit more depth here in a minute. But I want you to see what all those are. Those are the five things that your web, that, that home page, that landing page, must have if you want to have true and extreme success with your website and to grow your enrollments at your school. All right, so the first thing that, thing that I said that you need to have, that a home page needs to have, is it needs to provide a path for the three types of visitors to take. You know, because there's, there's really only three types of people that show up on, on, on your home page and you need to help them. If you neglect even any one of these groups, you will, you will tremendously reduce the effectiveness of your home page and it can easily lead to lower enrollments, whether it's people who aren't enrolling or parents who disenroll and move on and you never know why. So really make sure that you provide the path for these three. And the, the three are, so you've got the current parents, customers, and families, right? These are the ones who are already enrolled with you and who are, and, and who are attending. And I also say current families because don't forget, it's not just the mother and the dad who are paying the bills. It's also the grandparents. It can Sometimes it can even be the children, uh, especially if, if you're uh, working in some of the higher grades. Having the children involved and having them be able to, they, they need to have a path. 
Uh, you have the people who want to enroll. Now, these are the people who have not enrolled yet, but have decided that you are the one or the two top choices. They either want to enroll or they want to take a tour. And then you've got the cold prospects. These are people who who have never really come to your website before, and you've never talked to them, you've never heard of them. These are the quiet visitors. The, they're showing up to your website and leaving that, if done right, can lead to future enrollments down the road. All right, so let's talk about what, what do these current families need, these current parents and families. Again, it's not just the ones who are doing business with you, the, the, the ones who are writing the check, but it's everyone else who is associated with them. So again, their parents, the grandparents, uh, caregivers, you know, the, the the husband, the wife, their spouses, which can sometimes happen. So you need to make sure that you're providing a path for them. You also want to remind them why they're doing business with you. Right? Always make sure that you're always subtly reminding them as to why you are the best choice for them and, and why you are providing the service that relieves their pain. The majority, you realize the majority of people leave or go to a new company or a new school not because they were treated badly, but because they just feel unappreciated. They're allowed to just kind of fall off. You did all the effort to get them enrolled, to get them there, and they felt loved and wanted and needed, and you were going to solve their problems. And then once they're enrolled for two years, it kind of seems like you can barely care and you don't really even have the issue, the effort to go say hi to them. And so they just kind of wander off to, to, to a new school, and you really never know the true reason why they left. So you need to make sure that you're doing that, that you're helping that. You also you need to continue to sell these parents on the value that you're providing. Again, they're writing a check to you. This is not free to them. So you need to be reminding them every month, every time they come to the website, really every time they interact with anyone at your school, they need to be reminded why you are providing a value to them, all right? So that they know that they're providing, that they're getting something in 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 return for what they're providing you. You need to. You also need to provide access to the to the information that they need easily. You know, you need to make sure that this group, when they hit your homepage, can easily find the information that they need. Most of these parents are very busy, and they will vo voice their frustration if they can't find what they want very loudly and often, both to, both, both, both to other current enrolled parents and to non-enrolled parents. Right? They will complain about how hard it is for them to figure out what's going on with their school's activity <laughs> calendar to friends and family, you know, to friends and neighbors. How is that then going to play when maybe one of the other f other f neighbors decides that they might want to enroll with you? If they've heard nothing about how hard it is to figure out what's going on, how does that play? How does that make you look? So you want to make sure that you can, that this information is readily and easily found by a busy parent, no matter how they're coming to your website, whether it's on a phone, a computer, a tablet. You want to make sure that they can easily find this information. Uh, you know, so what is the activity plan? What's happening? What's the calendar of days off, and what what's the what's the schedule for their class? Are they doing a field trip? Do they have to pack special lunches? Clothing requirements. You know, is is it a gym day? Are they going to do art? So maybe you know, the top dress might not be a good thing. What day is picture day? All those need to be easily easily taken care of. And are they paid up? When is funding due? Make sure that all of that is also very easily found for the current families. And obviously, how to get to a parent portal. Most of you have some kind of a uh, payment portal or parent communication path that is password protected and secured. Make sure that's very easy to get to and find from the home page. Don't make people work at it. Don't put this stuff at the bottom of the home page. So they have to scroll all the way down to the bottom and then find some little itty bitty link in the footer or some little itty bitty text that's barely visible, you know, if you have perfect glass perfect eyes and a great magnifying glass. Make it very easy for these parents to find and for this group of people to find and move on to the next step so they can continue to love you. 
The next group that you need to make sure that you have on the home page an easy path is the people who want to enroll. These are the parents and the prospects who have already done their sort. They've already searched. They've been on the web. They've decided that either you or maybe two people or two schools are their ideal choice. So now they want to either just do the enrollment process or they want to take a tour. They actually want to commit to doing business with you. Make it easy for them. Because one of their biggest things is they are already scared about the choice they are making. So don't give them a chance to rethink and to back out, right? They don't want to look foolish in front of their spouse, in front of their friends, in front of their uh, neighbors. They don't want to look foolish. And they're going to be thinking to themselves, if I can't find how to enroll, what else am I not going to be able to figure out? You know, my husband's yelling at me, why don't we just, you know, how do we get the enrollment process going? And if she can't find, you know, if the wife can't find that process easily, then she's going to wonder, well, now what happens when picture day comes up, when the schedule comes up? How am I going to figure out all these changes? And the default of the human brain is to do nothing, is to just become paralyzed and to stop and just revert back. So you want to make sure that you have that. Make it easy for them to figure out how do they enroll. How do they take the tour? Make the process very clear and straightforward. You know, provide videos and how-to instructions for anything that is complicated or scary. So if you have enrollment forms, make sure you don't just give them the, the enrollment form and go, here, fill this out. You know, the website goes to, to enroll. Here's this 82-page you know, thing that asks for every single thing you've done for the last 25 years. I need to know what house you were at at 12 noon. Don't do that. Make it easy for them. And if you're going to have those kinds of forms, make sure that you explain. Here's the information that needs to be on these forms. Here's how this can be filled out. If you need a doctor's notes, here's how to get those immunization records from your doctor if you don't know. Just call the front office. They can generally fax those over. If you want, they can fax them straight to us if you would like that. Also, if you're doing any kind of government form, so for the programs that are subsidized, those forms can be very scary and very intimidating for parents. And also because the government is very uh, selective about looking at the forms and if even, you know, if everything's not perfect, they will bounce it back, and that's embarrassing for the parents. So make sure that you help them understand how to fill out the forms. I've regularly had parents, especially when they're state forms, they're a little confusing, do a screen capture video like I'm doing here on this that shows how to fill out the form and what goes in each blank and explain what that information should be and actually walk them through how to do it. You're going to be, you know, this is how you help people uh, also, when you're doing this, you want to use as few steps as possible to get the process going. Not to the end, but you want to get people to take small steps. Right? It's basically known as the law of consistency, which is basically a law of marketing that states that people will do a lot to stay consistent with what they think they are or who they wish to be. So. You know, so you want to get them to do a small step first to start the process, and then you can add the other steps down the road. Because once they've taken that first step, they go, oh, I'm now enrolling at Ace Academy. Let me now keep moving down. So if that first step is very simple and they can do it in five minutes, they've then said, hey, oh, I've already started the process. I'm now enrolled. Their, their subconscious says, I'm already enrolled in Ace Academy. Oh, now I have to fill out more forms. That's great. Oh, now I have to do more forms on top of that. Great, that's fine. Because their subconscious says, I'm already enrolled. Because they did that first form. So make it very easy to do that. A simple way to do this, instead of having them complete all the enrollment forms first and have that and their immunization records and everything before they show up for a tour, get the rest of the paperwork, just have them fill out a real simple form, right? Ask for just a one simple information form. Parents' names, kids' names, addresses. Have them fill that out. Then once that's filled out and you have that, then you can go back and go, okay, great, that gets your file started. Now here's all the other enrollment forms that we need. Uh, and also be very ca cautious about asking for private information too early on. Right? You don't need to know 
their social security number and their parents and, and the children's social security number and full ages and dates and marital status and everything just to do a tour. Skip all of that. Why not just ask for the parents' name and address and phone number and e email? Ask for the kids' first name and the age or the grade that they're in. That's all that you really need to conduct the tour. So why put that bottleneck there? Make it easy for them to enroll, because once you've done that first step, now they've come and done the tour, right? Now, they, now subconsciously, they're going to say, and by the law of consistency, they're going to say, I'm already enrolled. This is what I want to do. Now they'll start filling out all the paperwork. So don't put a roadblock up for these people. Make it simple for them to enroll. Another reason you want to have this enrollment information easy and prevalent on your homepage is it's a subtle reminder to the current parents to stay enrolled with you, right? You're kind of continuing to nudge them and remind them that there's always someone behind them. So if they unenroll, you've got a new path. And it's not just popping up whenever you have an opening. If it's always there, then they're going to always be thinking, oh yeah, there's always somebody new. And they're never panicking about filling the classes because there's always a new path coming in. Also, by having this information, by having this path, the path for the people who want to enroll, easy and prevalent on your homepage, it provides an easy path and a reminder to your parents to refer other people to your school. If every time they come to your homepage, they see, here's how to enroll, right? Their subconscious mind's going to pick them and go, oh yeah, I, sh I should help people enroll. I should refer my neighbor down the street who has talked about wanting to possibly come to our school. It also makes it very easy for them to say, hey, you know what, Jill? All you have to do to start over at our school next year is just go to our homepage. Here's the website. You'll see right at the top there's this thing that says how to enroll. Click on that button and it'll and it'll take you to, to the page to schedule a tour for the school. Just like that. That's all you have to do. That makes it very easy for that parent to enroll. So make sure your website, your homepage, has an easy path for people who want to enroll. And the final group of people you want to make sure that you have a path for when they come to your homepage, when they hit that landing page, is for the new or cold prospects. These are the people who you've never heard of. They've never talked to you. They're just starting their search. They've decided they have a pain. They want, they're thinking about having their child attend a private school. They might not even have made that choice yet. And they're in the information gathering phase. They want to find the information that's going to help them make the right choice. So what they're really, so what they're looking for is both why are you the best choice for their child's education? What is your USP, your unique selling proposition, right? Why they should do business with you versus everybody else out there, including doing nothing. They're looking for that, but they're also looking for the information of why should we pay for school? Why should we go to a private school? Why should we go to a parochial school? What are the benefits of that? Okay. So you want to provide an easy, so, so to help this, you want to provide an easy path to your authority sections, such as your blogs, your articles, and, and your videos. You want to make it very easy for them to determine that you really are the authority and that you really can help them. Uh, you also want to provide an easy path for them to get to the consumer guides, the checklists, the value statements. Make sure it's very easy for you to get to those pages so that they can determine that yes that both this is a path they want to go down and that you are the right place to be and, and th that you are the right choice so the home page so now that we've gotten the path for those three families we also need to make sure that our home page provides our USP our unique selling proposition and it needs to clearly tell people what it is. What it is about you? Why should they give their valuable time to you and your website for someone else or doing nothing at all? Why should they not just hit the back button and leave and go on to the next website or sit down and turn Survivor back on and just give up on this whole concept and tell their wife that, yes, I did look for private schools and, eh, I don't think it's a great idea anymore. Right? You need to do that. And you can do this by providing a headline that captures people's attention and lets them know what's in it for them.
right? By having benefit-driven content. So what's in it for me versus what what do you do? They don't care what you do. They care how you're going to solve their problem, right? There's the difference between a benefit and a feature. So make sure you're giving them the benefits. What do they get out of enrolling in your school? What's the end result? That's what they want to know, that they have a child who has a better education, that they have a child who has less problems, that they have a school that will teach that will it'll teach their child what they believe in and their beliefs and will make them a stronger, better person. That's what they're looking for. They're not looking that you're the best education source and, and that you provide the lowest ratios per room. That's not what they're looking for when they first hit that homepage. They want to know what's in it for them. Also, make sure that your images help show your benefits. Again, you have five seconds to get someone to convince someone to stay on your web page and to continue to learn more about your school. So you've got to make sure that those images really capture someone's attention and shows that you are the right answer. And again, it's very subtle. It's a very subconscious level. Make sure you look at your pictures very closely because even if the kids in front are clean and smiling and a beautiful desk, if in the background there's a messy kid who's frowning, the mind, the subconscious mind will pick that up and will and will sense it as an incongruency and can easily cause them ca cause them to hit the back button and to cause your home page to fail. All right, so that so your home page needs to be selling the prospects to stay on your page and learn more about your school. All right? You're not going to convince them in the in those five seconds to enroll in your school. There's no way you can do that. And if you ever could find someone that you can sell that fast that in five seconds you can convince them to enroll with you, they're probably not the client you want anyways. Right? So all you're trying to do with this homepage is convince them to stay longer on your website so that you can then convince them to enroll with you later. Another main goal of this landing page is to provide a reason for people to give up a little bit of their privacy to gain something of high perceived value. It's called list building. Right? We want to make sure that our home page, the first page that someone lands on, is helping us build a list. This is because of several different reasons. First off, 97% of people who want to do business with you will still leave your website without calling you. Right? They are, they're just not ready to enroll yet and they don't want to take that next step and call you and, and set, set, up, set up a tour or an enrollment meeting. Right? They're not there yet, so they're going to back, back away from the w web page. Uh, you also find it takes six or more touches from a business before someone is ready to buy. Them landing on your web pages once. If you don't have another way to reach out and continue to touch them and continue to communicate why you're the best option, they're going to become lost and they might not ever enroll. It takes at least six touches. I had one client not too long ago that told me it took 42 touches before a family of two. It just took one touch. You know, they touched the family every week or twice a week. They weren't pestering them. It wasn't just a sales message. A lot of it was very information, very useful stuff that the family found useful. They just weren't quite in the position. It wasn't the right time for them to enroll, but after 42 touches, it was finally the right time, time. so they did. The other thing that allowing you to have a list allows you to stay top of mind. Right? People regularly do business with the first company, the first school that they think of when they're ready to enroll. They might have done all their research six months before, and then when it comes time to enroll for the next school year, they go with the first one that comes to mind. Even if that's not the best one, they might have forgotten about the best one because the name was a little hard to remember, or it's kind of drifted off in, into the vagaries of busy world, right? So by having a list, by being able to communicate regularly with people, you stay top of mind. You think what it's going to be like when, six months down the road, you have sent them a valuable piece of information, an authority piece, every single week for six months, when it then comes time to enroll. Who are, who's going to be top of mind? You or the school that has never said a single word to them except for the couple times they, they went to their website and maybe the one tour they did and never calls them, never does anything with them. Or when they do, all they do is say, hey, you ready to enroll here? 
right? That's what having a list does. It allows you to be helpful to them. So you, and the final reason you want to be building a list is you want to be able to contact people when you want to, right? You don't want to ha have to rely on people coming to you all the time when it's time to enroll for next year. You don't want all your prospects to have to remember when that cutoff date is, when they need to do that process. You don't want them to have to remember that. Most of them can't and most of them won't. Most people are lazy and will forget. You want to be able to make sure that you can proactively reach out to them and say, hey, by the way, if you're looking to enroll for the next school year that's coming up, now is the time to start and here's the process. You want to be able to proactively reach out to them. And if you don't have a list of people, you can't do that. So you want to make sure that your home page is providing that list and that information. Now the best way we do this, there's obviously numerous ways, but the best way to do this is by, by what I like to call an irresistible free offer. And this is something that has extremely high perceived value to the prospect. It doesn't necessarily, but it doesn't necessarily need to be a high cost to you. You know, it's something that's going to provide tremendous value, tremendous knowledge, or tremendous usefulness to the prospect that might cost you nothing or pennies to provide. You also ideally are looking for this irresistible free offer, IFO, to point out the problems and solutions that you offer. You obviously don't want to have something that has nothing to do with your school or is not going to help drive people towards enrollment. Right? You want to make sure that you are helping people understand the problem that they have and the solution. So maybe pointing out how poorly public schools are doing in your area and how you do better, like on standardized tests. Uh, maybe you want to show how you, how most schools are atheist and you are not. So you're going to be teaching not just the knowledge but the skills and and the beliefs that your families believe in and, and that you believe in. You want to be pointing out those problems, pointing out the problem and the solution you offer. So some great ways to do this, some of the best irresistible free offers that I work with clients all the time on getting. First one is a consumer guide or a consumer awareness guide. You know, help educate people as to why private schools, charter schools, parochial schools are the right options. You know, a lot of this is done by answering the most commonly asked questions, both the frequently asked questions and what I call the should ask questions, which are the questions that people should be asking if only they knew what you knew about education. But they don't, so they don't ask those questions, right? Consumer awareness guides are great for providing all that information. How about a checklist or another great thing? Here's how to evaluate all the different schools that you're going to go tour. You know, what are their classroom sizes? What are the ratios? How are, you know, are the teachers all licensed and current? Are all the substitutes licensed and current? A lot of places, private schools are not required to have licensed, current, up-to-date substitute teachers, right? Make sure that people understand that if you're one of the schools that make sure that your subs do, that your substitutes do. Make sure you're doing that. Uh, the other one can be an evaluation test, right? How does your child rank against all the other children? Parents love to know how their child ranks. And can that be solved, right? Does your child understand the Bible? Does your child rank in the top 50% of scores? You know, the public schools, most of them don't. But at ours, 90% of our children do. Those are the kinds of irresistible free offers that really help you that... that parents are willing to go, yes, I'm willing to give up a little bit of my privacy in order to gain that information. The other thing that you want to make sure that your home page does, because it's critical for this, because this is the first page that not only that you land on, but that the search engines land on. So you want to make sure that you help them understand what your website is about. And this is done by what's known as keywords, which is basically the words that your prospect will be using that describes what you offer. Right? It's not always the words that you use. It's the words that your prospects use. You want to make sure that your website contains those words. You do not know how many times I go to a client's website and they wonder why they're not ranking well and why no one can find them on the web. And I go to their website and realize that at no point do they ever talk about being a private school, a high school, an elementary school, you know, K to 12, K to 8 education, class, none of those words are there. It's all fluffy, feely words. Or about them. You know, at Ace Academy, we help children 
excel and be their greatest potential. That doesn't really help a search engine understand that you're a private school. That just confuses the living daylights out of them. So make sure that you're using those words, the words that your prospects are going to be using. And also there's this other thing called LSI, which is latent somatic indexing, which basically means using words that would also be associated with your school. Right, so very natural speak. You just want to make sure that you're talking about, you know, our school, our school, our school. Right? Make sure that you're using, you know, school, classroom, students, teachers, classes, class, the grades, the ages, children, right? Children and students can be the same thing, but the search engines are looking to see that you're using both those words all the time. So really make sure that you're using those on your homepage. Make sure that you have a certain density of those words on your homepage so that when they when the search engines get to your website they can understand what your web page is about. The other thing is to realize that it takes about two to five hundred words for the search engines to really understand what that page is about. So your home page needs to have a good amount of content. It can't just be a couple links, a couple pictures, and like a paragraph about what you're about. You want several paragraphs. You want to make sure that you have enough words for the search engines to understand what your web page is about, what that home page is about. You also want to make sure that some of the background technical stuff is understood. You want to make sure that your title tag, which is the little uh, file folder tab at the top, right, that it has what your what that web page is about. You know, imagine that it is a book title on the spine of a book, okay? And it needs to tell what the page is about, not just home. You know how many websites I see that just have their home page listed as home. That's not what the home, what your page is about. And it's not always the school name either. Generally it's private school, parochial school, and the town that you're in or the city that you're operating in. Right? Or it's Christian faith based school, private school in Denver, Colorado. That's the that's the title of that page is the problem that it's solving. So make sure you have that. You also want to make sure that the description for this page, which is again in the background, your webmasters can do this easily. Who's ever updating your website can do this. If you're doing it on like something like WordPress yourself, these are very easy. They're, towards the bottom of the page, very easy to change. Right? So the description is something that you don't see on your web page, but it's generally about two sentences that explain more what the page is about. What is the benefit someone's going to get from reading that page? And if you you know, if we want to talk about the book analogy still, like the title tag would be the title of the book and on the spine, the description would be that back cover would be that paragraph that's on the back that tells you just a big overview what that book is about. That's what the description is about. It's about telling people what the page is about. Now it doesn't show up on your page anywhere, but it generally shows up in 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 the search results where the title tag will be the blue bolded section at the top. The description is what's right under it. That's those two sentences in a in a search result that's right under that page. So you want to make sure that you have those and make sure that they're different, that they're not the same for every single website out there. Again, imagine going into a library, if we continue with the uh, book analogy of these, and every single book out there had the same title and the same description. How would you find the book that you were really looking for? It's not going to help. You want to make sure you have the words that work. So put a little bit of time time into those to make sure that they really do speak to what your website is about. That web page, that landing page is about. All right, now, to make things a little bit more complicated, you want to make sure that all of this information is what's known as above the fold. Uh, this is actually a term that is a tech term now, but comes from back in the old days when newspapers used to arrive. And if you've ever, you know, remember how the newspapers used to come in the come when they were just folded in half and you'd have the top half of of the newspaper was what is what you'd see and that's what you'd throw down on the news on the uh, table before you read it that's called above the fold bef above that fold where the paper folds in half right so the the top information that you see and that's what you'd skim and you'd see the headline 
and you'd see you know the one or two big stories and that big picture that 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 would catch your attention and sell the newspaper or sell you into reading the paper that's what above the fold is that we're looking to do the same thing same thing but with a web page this is the content that is on the first page that you don't have to scroll down to get to so what's displayed when that page first loads without hitting the scroll scroll button and the reason for this there's two main reasons for this first off is that 80 percent or more of people especially new prospects will not scroll down your page they will look at what's on that top page above the fold and if they don't like what they see they will hit the back button and leave and it's not just what they can read again you've got five seconds we're back to that five second rule it's what they can perceive in those five seconds can they perceive that there's a reason to stay on that page otherwise they're gonna kick the back button and do a new Google search or move on to something else so you want to make sure that you have provided them above the fold the content that we've talked about above you need to make sure that all that information is you know that there's a path for all the different type for, for the three different types of people to show up you want to make sure that they understand your USP they want to make sure that all the search engine stuff is provided make sure that all of that stuff is provided above the fold one of the big things that I see that causes this not to happen is that designers love those big flashy headers that take up half to two-thirds of the page when it first loads because it looks great and it's beautiful and you love it but then it means that you have so much less content of space available in order to get people to stay on there um, so make sure that you have the headers not too big also save the bottom of the home page then for all the additional content you have to get the prospects attention so people will scroll once you get them to engage with that page and they say yes I want to know more then you can put some great content down at the bottom you have them scroll down and learn more about the process but you have to get their attention in the beginning just like with an old newspaper you had to get someone to buy that newspaper off the stand by just the headline and the picture and one or two of the articles for them then for that person to be walking by and go oh yeah I want to know about that let me grab this paper give you a little bit of money and then take it home and then I'll open up the rest and read everything else that's the same thing you have to do with your home page and it has to be done above the fold to get people to buy that paper and then they can move on to the next alright just a little bonus here in this day and age you really also want to make sure that all of this that, that you consider how mobile friendly your home page or your landing page is now home pages and landing pages are different or are, are, are different in the fact that they really need to be mobile friendly because that's where people are going to land first. A lot of times people will just do the search there then they can always go to a to a main to, to a big computer later right so and the way you check to see if your website is mobile friendly is simply to go to your website on any kind of you know on a couple different mobile phones or tablets yeah you know if you have an iPhone you know borrow another friends you know the 6 plus 7 plus borrow a tablet borrow an Android phone bo borrow a uh, Kindle device or a galaxy from someone J just borrow a couple I'm sure if you ask around your school teachers and staff have every single one of them and just look and make sure that your web page is showing up well and the reason this matters is because most people will start their search from a smartphone or a tablet people start their searches these days when they're talking to a friend they'll just pick up their phone and start and research you and oh yeah let's you know what I was thinking about going to your school let let me take a look real quick at your school's website and see what I think of it yeah or or sometimes they'll do do that while waiting for something else to happen while waiting at dance practice while waiting at soccer practice uh, while waiting in line for the grocery store they'll pick up their smartphone or tablet and start trying to research a school sometimes it's even as simple as doing it during a commercial break on television they'll pull up a tablet and they'll start going to your website trying to find information so make sure that your site shows up well a couple big considerations you need to think about uh, when doing that with, uh, about a mobile friendly site which can change which is different from a desktop friendly website you need to make sure that the website loads quickly the page loads quickly 
realize that even 4G networks are tremendously slower than DSL. And a lot of people don't, not everyone has that full bandwidth of the full 4G. So realize that pages lo load slower. Um, the big culprit there is you need to make sure that your images are optimized for the web. So make sure that your, you know, the, the images are the right size. Now, if you have, a lot of people don't realize this, but if an image is, say, you know, 18 inches wide by 12 inches high, when it, if that's, which, which is not at all uncommon for a smartphone to take images of that size, when that image loads onto a website, it actually has to load the whole huge image, and then it reduces it down to that smaller size, to a, you know, a two-inch size. That's the way websites work, is they load the big image, and then they shrink it. And that takes a lot of time. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that, that image is already created in that, is saved in that two image size. You also want to make sure that it's not too high resolution. Okay? Most pictures that, that, that you take pictures on your phones and everything else are at 300 dots per inch or DPI. The website only displays at 72. Right, so you're talking what three and a half times more dots than the website can produce, but it still has to load all those dots. So make sure that you run a simpler image. Make sure you again just optimize those images so it'll load very quickly both on a regular website and on your mobile devices. Make sure that you have simple mobile navigation for those three types of visitors. You still want to make sure that all three of them can get to where they need to be. And this is where especially the parents who are already enrolled really come in and the ones who want to enroll with you. Those are the two that you really have to worry about. Why? Because the ones who are already enrolled are just looking for schedule. They're looking to get something done quick and the ones who want to enroll with you are trying to solve the problem they're waiting in line or they're waiting for dance practice to end or soccer practice to end and they realize they want to set up a tour and they're trying to do it quickly and easily. And if you make it too hard for them, it gets pushed back to some other task that will be done some other day, which as we all know, some other time means never. You also want to make sure, of course, that your USP is clearly visible to people without scrolling much. Now, this is where the, the scrolling does kind of take a little bit of F, a little bit of a change because people will scroll down on a mobile site because they realize that things have been compressed. So they will scroll, but they won't scroll too far. So don't make it too hard for them. Don't make them work for it. But do realize that they will scroll down so it's not the first thing they see that is okay. All right, so I hope you found this helpful. I want you to remember that your home page is the most critical page on your website and is a huge player in the success of your website and your ability to have full enrollment at your school. So please make sure that you put some time and effort into thinking about what your homepage looks like and make sure that it meets all those needs of the different types of things. So make sure that it is providing a path for those three types of visitors. Make sure it's providing the ones for the people who... For, for the current families, for the ones who want to enroll and the cold prospects who are in information seeking mode. Make sure that it provides your USP easily seen by people. Make sure it provides a reason for you to get back in contact with prospects down the road. Make sure your page is search engine friendly. Make sure it's supporting the search engines and helping them do their job so that they can help you. Make sure that as much critical content as possible is above the fold. And finally, also make sure that it is mobile friendly, if at all possible. Again, this has been Devin Murray with AttractMoreFamilies.com. Take care.